Mm. Good morning. Hey, good afternoon. Good afternoon and good evening, my illustrious family. Welcome, welcome, welcome back, back, back to this mental, mental stuff. Right here with me, your host, Khadija. All right, y'all. Y'all know we're going to talk about the 1%. The social path, the narcissist, um, uh, the emotionally dead that are walking this earth right now. Okay, we got to talk about it, and it'll probably give us a clear understanding about how we got right here, right? Okay. Now, a lot of y'all don't want to deal with the fact that I contend with these narcissistic individuals created a world that was um, relevant to their madness. And the only people that were successful and got over and had good things happen to them were people who were Caucasian. People that came to birth with a with hue, with brown hue, black hue, they were deemed these uh, scapegoats, problem child, whatever you want to call us. Um, and then they set up all these institutions to validate their madness um, towards us and lack of empathy for anything that they were doing to us. So, um, the psychopathic high office holders held slaves. So y'all already know that. And they ran around talking about holding truths to be self-evident. All that kind of crazy stuff at the same time doing what they were doing. Uh, again, this is from our favorite book, Dirty Little Secrets by Claude Anderson. Many of America's historical public figures were colorblind to blackness and became slaveholders. Although slaveholding was the greatest among employees at the lowest level of government, the highest levels of leadership did their share of setting the tone by codifying enslavement. On the eve of the Civil War analysis, I mean, on the eve of the Civil War, analysis of the slaveholders and the federal in the federal offices signal why there will be a national conflict. As example. 11 of 16 U.S. presidents, 17 of the members of the U.S. Supreme Court, 14 of 19 U.S. Attorney Generals, and 21 of 33 Speakers of the House of Representatives, and 80 of the 134 high-level representatives of the U.S. Foreign Service had been or were slaveholders. Now y'all see we can't take y'all serious. I mean, and do you understand why we have to make justice really ring out? We have always been the moral compass for America. And we are just that right now. Because this is so preposterous that you should see how psychotic this is. Um... Uh... Uh, I'm sorry. 80 of the 134 high level, okay, I said that representatives of the U.S. Foreign Service had been a worse slaveholders. In a representative government, all of the presidents from Washington through Jackson, except for John Adams, were slave owners. Popular leadership was willing to use the language of freedom and liberty and even willing to fight the wars against tyranny, but they were unwilling to abolish slavery or racial inequality in America. Now, do y'all see this? This hypocrisy? Do you see? This is how you started with your craziness. This is how the, the madness began, where the narcissism, the uh, uh, lack of social skills, just the empathy, the, the pure evilness of what humanity should be started right here. Just look at this. Listen to the behavior of these Europeans. Because there was no black people up in here. So white people, I mean Europeans were responsible for this. Okay. 
popular leadership was willing to use the language of freedom and liberty and even willing to fight against wars of tyranny, but were unwilling to abolish or slavery or racial inequality in America. William Penn, like many other noted ab abolitionists, invested heavily in the international slave trade through the middle of the 18th century. Obviously, profits overwhelm humanitarian concerns and racial justice. Sounds familiar, y'all? Y'all history supersedes you. But at least one, a spouse disagreed with her slave-holding husband, who was extremely visible and popular, who was an extremely visible and popular slaveholder. Um... Abigail Adams wrote to her husband, John, in 1774 and expressed, I wish that there was not a black slave in the providence. It always appeared a most iniquitous scheme to me to fight ourselves for what we, that what we are daily robbing and pandering from those who have as good as a right to of freedom as we have. Her husband, John Adams, answered her letter by stating, There was no rational explanation for the inconsistency, except that most white slave owners needed their free labor and the profits that it produced. No matter how mad, no matter how cruel, no matter how unjust, no matter how mentally ill, no matter how sociopathic, narcissistic, personality disordered syndrome that this behavior is, is exemplifying, don't matter. They need their free labor and the profits that it produced. Just like whooping us in the head and shooting us and killing us and putting us in all these prisons. And, and then put the, the stigma on us that we're so violent. Yet, everything is in your history is you've been violent towards us. And it is such a mind fuck that you people uh, have been responsible. And I'm not saying individually because, you know, I got people that are white that I adore individually. But collectively, you have been the most evil force on this planet when it comes to empathy and mistreatment of other human beings. And I just got to say it. Check yourself. Check your history. Read your history. See what you, the vibrations you put on this planet. And then look where we ended up now. Full circle with madness. If you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, and share.